I would like to thank the Chairman and Ranking Member for the time. Mr. Bullard, do you have any concerns about H.R. 1965? That is the bill that exempts uh, two-thirds of the firms from submitting XBRL data? Um, absolutely. I think we just heard a reference from uh, Ms. Wagner as to the importance of that information being accessible. And I can tell you as a, as a professor, uh, it is extremely frustrating even being very familiar with Edgar trying to find information and decipher it. For example, the SEC still does not require the most obvious way to let people know what changes in registration statements has happened, which is a, require people to provide a redlined version. And I mentioned that at a PCAOB Advisory Council meeting at which Chairman uh, White was in attendance, uh, and we still see no movement there. Um, the SEC uh, continues, and I think everyone in this green room would probably agree, um, to be a 20th, 20th century agency in terms of technology um, and uh, in eliminating uh, any kind of uh, accessibility information is exactly the wrong direction to go. What are other countries doing in terms of re um, uh, this registration? I have no idea. Okay. In terms of uh, use of extensible markup, anybody? Uh, I guess my question is, yeah. would this put the United States at any kind of a competitive disadvantage? Well, I think it weakens our position. If I had to guess, I would say we are probably much more technologically advanced than other countries, but mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't looked at that question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, turning to another question, I would like to get some of your views uh, regarding the policy implications of Accelerating Access to Capital Act. Myself and 25 other uh, mem Democratic members voted against the Wagner Bill last session because we were concerned that the bill reduced important information to investors. Do you have any concerns that this bill could reduce information to investors? Yeah, I, I mean, that really is the issue. The, the bill asks the right question that the SEC should be looking at, and that is with respect to uh, the paragraph 6 opportunity for uh, an entity that has less than a $75 million public float, um, should they still be subject to a restriction on how many securities they sell as a percentage of their float? And that is what Mr. Wilde was referring to as the dilution problem. Uh, and I think reasonable minds can disagree about that. But the SEC, when it established that float, had originally proposed a 20 percent float. It did some research uh, to answer the question asked before um, as to whether it was an appropriate number, and they were persuaded to raise that number. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to find any further research on where that number is, and that is exactly the kind of research that SC the SEC should be doing on an ongoing basis and is animating Mr. Hurt's concerns. Um, but those kinds of issues that are extremely detailed uh, really need to be considered by the SEC. Uh, but it is not fair to ask me to defend the SEC's capacity to do that review. I think that, uh, that is a separate issue. Um, and, and I agree they may need to be required to look at those questions, because I think it is asking exactly the right question. It is looking in the right direction. Um, but Congress is not the place to do that. So um, as I indicated before, um, last May um, is when, that, when we looked at this bill before. Have there been any developments since that time that um, bear on this issue of whether this is the right approach? Um, as to the use of Form S3? Yes. Um, nothing, nothing comes to mind. Okay, never mind. Really change that environment. Now. Yeah, my staff recommended yep. that question, so we will mm -hmm. just move on along. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, well, my staff failed to give me an answer. <laughs> No problem. Anyway, um, last Tuesday the SEC announced its approval for a, a two-year tick size pilot program which would study the impact of requiring small company shares to be quoted or traded in nickel increments. Considering the SEC action, is, uh, is the Garrett bill appropriate? Well, I think it is an example of the SEC doing exactly what it should be doing in many areas that are the subject of some of these bills, and that is looking at flexible options and doing a lot more experimentation. We really need the SEC to stop feeling that if it adopts a rule, it has to apply it to everyone because it feels it has to defend any potential failures on just one front. We need to see a lot more of that. The SEC is doing it. And then requiring that you have a venture exchange that has uh, nickel pricing is really interfering with and undermining that effort by the SEC. Uh, the current structure of the regulations um, that apply to exchanges where I think you have over 90 ATS exchanges, has created an enormous amount of diversity in that market. And we need to reward the SEC for providing uh, additional flexibility in the form of the pilot program and not undermine it by uh, creating competing exchanges that have uh, provisions that will be very difficult to change, given that they are in statutory form. 
That's the end of my time. Uh, thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The gentleman.